Thank you. My name is Jerome Kennedy Fitzgerald. I am the proud son of Edward Patrick Fitzgerald. And one of the things we remember so fondly about uh, growing up uh, with Daddy was that he was really passionate about two things in particular. Uh, first and foremost was Junkanoo uh, and the Valley Boys. And of course, he grew up in an era where politics um, was coming to the forefront and the empowerment of young Bahamians, which is something that he took uh, very, very seriously. So he was very involved in the Progressive Liberal Party um, and the formation and being involved with those leaders at the time. And so um, our memories of him from then really centered around those uh, key areas. And then we started to attract um, people who were who had been active in John Canoe longer than myself, people like Doyle Burroughs. And one of the keys was uh, we had a quality drummer in the person of Edward Fitzgerald, who came to us in 1959. Uh, he brought with him a wealth of experience, even though he was a young man at that time. He brought Bourbon Smith along with him. And uh, we got um, people from up in the Camp Road area, like Deuce Thompson, and others started to follow. Uh, he was also, as many people know, he was a fantastic father uh, to me and all of my brothers and sisters. Um, and we always knew that at the end of the day, his children uh, came first. Uh, there wasn't anything that we wanted for, um, that we didn't receive. We were able to receive a good ed education, uh, travel around the world, and know at the end of the day that um, in his own way, he showed us that um, his love uh, had no end, really, uh, to it. Uh, one of the things, you know, when you talk to him about his success in business, he always goes back to the discipline um, that uh, being in Junkanoo and involvement with the Valley Boys, that discipline uh, that was ingrained in him from that and how that then uh, was translated into uh, his business uh, success. And I think that, uh, for me personally, I know one of the greatest attributes that um, I really loved about Daddy was that um, he had and has such a big heart. Um, he really is probably one of the most giving um, people that I know. And I, I recall very fondly one day someone uh, commenting, I think I was probably about 17 at the time, and so you're talking about 30 years ago, but I still remember it today when someone was commenting that it's a good thing, Edward, you're not in charge of the Treasury. And he says, well, if I was in charge of the Treasury, at least the money would go where it's supposed to go and it would go to the people. And so I always uh, remember that. But that's, that's how Daddy uh, um, is. And he always treated everybody the same. That's another thing I really loved about him. It didn't make a difference what your background was or where you came from or who you were related to or what political party you supported, what your religion was. He always treated everybody the same. And I think that that's something that um, I had the great privilege to really learn from him, having the opportunity at a young age really to sit in the office with him um, in all of his meetings, travel with him in every end of business meetings, see how he interacted with people and the great level of respect that he always showed um, to everyone. And so those are some of the things that when people comment um, to me about today, I really give my father, Edward, um, all of the um, credit when it comes to that. That's something that he instilled in all of his children. And so I think I can speak on behalf of all of us when I say that. We could not have had a better father. We don't think there's a better father anywhere in the world. Uh, one who has shown us a great deal of love and compassion and inspired us all to really be our best and inspired me to achieve whatever it is I dreamed that I could achieve. And it's with that confidence uh, that I have been able to accomplish what I have and my siblings have been as well. But the following year, I persuaded people to come with us. Edward, I think they were, if I'm not sure if Edward was there at the time, because me and Edward, like I say, rushed for his father the year before. 
but I persuaded people like Michael Curtis, Lord Cody, Deuce, Lestron. They were people who were seasoned Jungkook people. So we got the, in 1960. We got a, a lot of the people from some of the major senior groups at the time to come with the Valley Boys, and that was to us that was the the beginning of, of what we have today. Because I always used to tell us, you know, uh, I always thought the Valley Boys started in 1960. Tell you, remind me that you all had a group from 1958, uh, which was the forerunner of what we call the Valley Boys. And you, you know, we had we had people when we started. The Valley Boys was an offshoot of the Pioneer Sporting Club, because if you were a member of the Pioneer Sporting Club, then you were a member of the Valley Boys. It was around the time when, when, when Gus went to school and myself and Ed and Edward was actually running the group. Because Edward filled in when Gus was off at Morgan State and they had shot the Thunderball movie. Edward was actually in charge. The drums, the drums has, has evolved from the, the regular keg. Uh, we used to have the wooden keg, either the, the salt beef keg was the um, uh, preferred um, barrel. Then they started making those. Um, um, one of the honorees, um, not one of the honorees, but Doyle Burroughs, um, he was instrumental in the early years of, of heading the drums for the valley as well, along with Kala George Wilson. He was also, um, well, Gala was our lead, one of our lead uh, drummers when I came in. Um, our other honoree, Mr. Edward Fitzgerald, he was the lead bella before, uh, the lead drummer before Gala. And I believe Gala took over from him. Um, uh, in that mix, you had a person like a Bourbon Smith, you had a person like a Frankie Smith. You had persons like uh, a Reginald Forbes. You have persons like um, 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 Churchill, Roll, Cocter. Those fellas are off in, in Freeport. And one thing a lot of people uh, may not know about Daddy, of course, is that Daddy was a policeman. He started off his career as a policeman. Uh, for our part, uh, the kids, we didn't know him as a policeman. By the time uh, we came around, he had left the police force and was in business. Uh, but being a policeman was always first and foremost in his heart. And so we grew up with having policemen around the house, having them come into the office, and uh, a great connection, even still today, that we have with many persons in the police force really as a result of Daddy's commitment to the police force. And I don't think he ever stopped being a policeman. And uh, when you listen to stories going as far back as his childhood and him playing cowboys and Indians, you know, uh, you go and talk to people in the valley and they have all the stories of daddy being and playing cowboys and Indians and how you couldn't shoot him and how he would never die and so forth. And so uh, that's just who daddy was. He just has a, that's who daddy is. He just has a spirit um, that does not die, does not give up, does not quit. and. Um, that's the one thing you uh, know about him and his career as a policeman. You know, he was very, very um, stern and strict and fearless, uh, which he still is. And um, he didn't care who broke the law. Uh, you know, there's a story about him um, having the nerve to stop of all people who he said was speeding one day, his own mother, Nana. And so, you know, if you have, if you have the courage to stop your mother uh, for speeding, and the story goes that he told her that, that she needs to slow down, and if she don't slow down, that he can give her a ticket, of which she responded to him, and those of you all who know Nana would appreciate this. She said, yeah, the next time you're going to have to catch me to give me the ticket, and she sped off. So, <laughs> so that's, that's, that's daddy, and um, that's the relationship. Uh, he has uh, with Nana, and we also thank God that our grandmother Nana is still here uh, today. The matriarch of our family uh, is still here to, to lead us, and um, she is a special person. She had a special 
uh, son in Edward. And so again, um, we say we're just so grateful um, to have him and have shared his life and his experiences uh, with him and able to relay again these experiences to the Valley Boys and to the wider community. And so again, we appreciate everything you're doing to honor him. Um, and Daddy was a big dreamer. I mean, a lot of people don't know that, but um, growing up, he always had an idea and he would come and share it with us. And he always encouraged us to dream big. And that's one of the things that I think we always remember. Everything had to be big. And um, you had to have the confidence to know that you could dream big and execute on something big. And he always gave you that, that confidence. But that came through his life experiences. And he was, he's just a, just a unique and special individual. Well, Daddy credits, of course, being involved in John Canoe through his father, who was uh, Eugene Fitzgerald, who was uh, actively involved in John Canoe and actually brought himself and um, brought Daddy and um, Dr. Off, uh, Roni Fitzgerald, and also other members of the family um, as well brought into John Canoe as a result of that. And the passion that Daddy had, I think, was born from an early age. He said as early as age seven or eight, um, he was actively uh, involved in John Canoe and very interested in what was going on. And of course, you know, Dr. Off is, is no stranger, and so that, uh, no stranger not only to John Canoe, but to the Bahamas. And so that um, spirit uh, was actually passed on from what we call Granddaddy Gene and who we call Granddaddy Gene, that was passed on to both uh, Daddy and um, Dr. Off, and even Uncle Gene Sr. was very involved in, in music. And so I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the Valley Boys and the committee for honoring uh, Daddy, Edward Fitzgerald, with an honor that I think is well-deserved, and we are really happy to uh, accept it um, on his behalf. And so thank you very much.